Hello and welcome back to my Arduino and electronics channel. My name is John and this is video number 7 in a series of tutorials about Arduino and electronics. In the previous tutorial we saw how to use the switch statement, and indeed we used a few variables which we initialized with the keyword int. This time we will see what that keyword means, and we will see all other possible types of data that we can use in Arduino. First of all, we need to understand how Arduino, or indeed all others computers, stores data. The smallest possible piece of information is called a bit, and it only can be in two possible states, which are 0 and 1. Think of it like a switch that can only be on or off. There are no other possible states. As you can see there is not much we can do we just one bit. If we want to be able to store a number or a letter we need more of them. For this we use groups up 8 bits, that are called bytes. Information in a byte is stored in binary system, which means that every bit is a different power of 2, the first bit on the right have a value 0 or 1, the second 0 or 2, the third 0 or 4 and so on until we get to the last on the left side which has a value of 128. Counting in binary is an easy task. To set the value to 0, we set all bits to 0 like this. To represent the number 1, we set the first bit to 1 and add the values together, so we have 7 zeros plus 1 equals 1. To write the number 2 we do this, 6 zeros plus 2 plus 0 equals 2. For 3 we set the first two bits to 1, and we have 6 zeros plus 2 plus 1 equals 3. We can carry on in the same way until we reach the end and all bits are set to 1. This will give us a value of 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 255. If we need to store a bigger number we can add another byte to the left side, and increase the maximum value to 65535, and we can keep adding bytes until we have enough space to store our number. Now let's go back to Arduino. All the variables we used so far were initialized with the keyword int. This keyword means that the variable is meant to store an integer number, and in Arduino this data type uses 2 bytes, or 16 bits if you prefer. As we just saw with 2 bytes we can store numbers from 0 to 65535. In Arduino this is split in two parts, to allow for negative numbers, so an integer type variable can hold a value from minus 32,768 to 32,767. What is going to happen if we exceed these values? Let's do some experiments with this. Open the Arduino IDE and write this simple program. First of all in the setup function initialize the serial communication as we will want to display some results on the computer monitor. Then what we want to do is try to increase a variable value until we get to the boundary of its available value and see what happens. To do this we need to initialize the variable in a different way compared to what we did till now. In all previous examples we did set up the variables inside the loop function. If we do this now, you can see that if we set the variable test to a certain value and then try to increase this value we have a problem. Each time the loop function will get to the end and start over from the beginning, the value will be set again to where we started, and all we will get is toggling between the initial value and that value plus 1. This is can be solved by declaring the variable outside the loop function, and we do that at the beginning of the sketch. We say that this variable is now global, which means that all functions in the sketch can use and alter its value. Declaring a variable inside a function makes it local, which means that the variable can only be used by the function in which it was declared. So if we declare the variable inside the setup function and try to access it from inside loop we will get an error like this. The IDE is informing us that we have declared a variable inside the setup function, and then we tried to use it from inside the loop function. This is not allowed and so we have to declare the variable outside the functions, thus giving it a global scope. 
Now have a look at what we do to change the value inside the variable. We write, test, equals, test, plus 1, which means take the value inside the variable test and then assigns to the variable test that value plus 1. There are shorter ways to do the same thing, for instance we could write, test plus plus, or test plus equals 1. But I feel that at the beginning this form is much clearer and readable, so I will stick to this for now. At this point we need to send the value to the serial monitor so we can see how it changes. To do this we use serial, print lane, as we did in previous lessons. Now just add a small delay to enable us to read the values, say 250 milliseconds. Upload the sketch and open the serial monitor. You will see that when the value exceeds the maximum allowed it will simply roll over and start from its lower value. When we try to add 1 to 32,767, we will obtain minus 32,768. This shows that we must always be careful in choosing the data type for our variable, or we will get unexpected results. But what are the other types available in Arduino? Let's start with the more simple, the Boolean variable. This can hold only two values, which are, true, or false. The keyword to declare a Boolean variable is bool. The Boolean variable takes one byte of memory. Then we have the type, byte, that can hold a value from 0 to 255 and it is declared with the keyword byte. We then have the type char, that still holds one byte but it is assigned number, from minus 128 to 127. The Arduino ID will try to interpret this as a character in some circumstances, so only use this to actually hold a character. Remember that in a computer all alphabet letters are stored as numbers so for instance capital, A has a value of 65, B is 66 and so on. We can also have the unsigned char type, which is exactly the same as the, byte type, so if what you need is an unsigned 8-bit type, for clarity you should use the type byte instead. After that we have the integer, which we have used before and as we saw can hold a value from minus 32,768 to 32,767. We then have the unsigned integer, which can hold only positive numbers from 0 to 65,535. For bigger values there is the long type, that uses 4 bytes. And the unsigned long, that stores values in excess of 4 billions. Finally, we have the float data type, that unlike all the other types can hold number with decimals. In addition to this, there are two kinds of string types, one in lower case and the other with a capital letter, that are used to work with text but this will be the subject of the next tutorial. This is all for today. Next time we will have a look at other two data types that are used to work with text and try to understand the difference between string, in lower case, which is an array of characters, and string, with a capital S, that is an object. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to hear your comments and suggestions. If you liked it, you can leave me a like, and subscribe to my channel so you will not miss the next videos. See you soon on Arduino and Electronics channel.